Charles and I met recently through a mutual friend. He is a, a former banker. He had success in that life, and then he decided to fix a problem in the, the freight cargo space supply chain. And I think is one of the best examples of somebody how, who's moved into operating a business and doing that very, very successfully um, from the banking world. So would you, would you please welcome Charles Bourbonnet to the stage. Charles. Thank you very much, Julie. It's a pleasure to be here um, and pleasure to meet uh, over the last few days uh, some great people. So um, as Julie said, um, ah, yes, I'm in charge. Right, so um, HiveZox is a Swiss innovative technology company. We provide real-time data intelligence. Uh, we're a business to business and we focus on supply chains and logistics. And we're leading that industry to become autonomous in the future, okay? Now, as, she, as Julie mentioned, I have a background in investment banking, finance and wealth management. And a few years back, I met somebody um, who spoke to me about logistics and all the issues uh, that were going on in there. And I, it blew my mind because I literally thought companies actually had uh, visibility over their cargo, over their shipments, over their products. Um, and so I started to research into the industry and I found out a lot of things uh, that just made me uh, realize that there was something, there, was, there had to be a better way to, to make sure that this didn't happen. And these are the things that I started finding out. So to move a product or a shipment from point A to point B, you can go through 30 actors, okay? You can have over 100 people involved in over 200 manual uh, information exchanges, okay? So this already is an area that is prone to human error. Then, during my research, I also found out over $60 billion of goods are lost or stolen annually. That's only what's declared because they have very, very high insurance premiums uh, to pay if they do uh, claim on their insurance. Over $35 billion in uh, pharmaceuticals are uh, lost annually due to temperature excursions. Okay, and these are life-saving medications that need to get to patients. Over 35% and that's actually improved. That used to be 50% of vaccines are destroyed during the logistics. So they're not even getting to the people that need them in time. And this is crazy because if you think that when people tell us about the fact that we don't have produce enough food to be able to feed the world, it's not actually true. It's because we consume about 20% of what is actually grown around the world, right? And one third of everything that is actually produced is wasted, spoiled in, during the logistics. And then this is, a, this is the one bit here that really got me and said, okay, we need to do something. Over a million patients die annually in North America and Europe, okay, and those numbers are a lot higher when you go to emerging markets, from taking medication that has been given to them through prescription that they bought at the pharmacy or have received in the hospital simply because that medication wasn't stored or maintained properly during its transportation, and there's no viewership on this. So let's understand this. Logistics is about getting things from point A, so from manufacturing, to the end point, the patient, the customer, whoever it is, right? Now, you're gonna say, well, obviously, this industry, we've already been seeing loads and loads of money going into it, right? And it's true, billions have been invested into the last mile. Last mile is the lowest risk area, all right? It's when it's already at the, when it's at the, already at the distribution center locally, in the city, usually, and it's, your la, and it's your last mile to the customer. It's a very, very short distance. It's less than a day, it's a few minutes, a, few, a couple hours. Where we need to get involved, and sorry, and, and, and this area has already seen a lot of investment, as I said, and is, being, is moving into, uh, ro with robotics and engineering, uh, and the advancements in those sides, we're starting to see a lot of improvements there, to make everything on demand. So this is going to help us in the future when we're looking at autonomous logistics. So what do we have? We have electric bicycles, on-demand delivery. We have uh, AGVs, or autonomous ground vehicles, drones, electric trucks, and those are coming into autonomous trucks. Very good. That, makes it mean, that means that everyone can get their Amazon packs a little faster, right? This is the problem that we need to take care of. 95% of all issues arrive in the first mile. The first mile is the factory to that local distribution center. 
That is where you have all the issues occur in logistics, okay? All those issues that I said before. And this is why companies need to solve this. And they need to solve this because, and they need to get sustainable. If companies want to make an improvement on their ESGs, this is the area that they need to focus on because that's where they're going to uh, make a huge, huge, huge improvement. And the amount of waste in logistics is just insane. So how do we do this? Uh, sorry, uh, what I'm talking about by waste, we also have pandemics, lockdowns, restrictions. I don't think we'll see lockdowns anymore, but definitely pandemics and restrictions. Blockades, Suez Canal, we just had it again with the sandstorm. I didn't see it myself, but somebody was telling me this morning that there was a sandstorm that has stopped all the shits uh, of the uh, Suez Canal this morning. Uh, routes, changes, location, always changing routes sometimes due to uh, uh, bad conditions. Theft and loss. Temperature excursions, humidity excursions, huge, huge issues, and then drops, shocks of all products. And this is products that you always have to then replace. And most of the time nowadays, no one finds out until it's been delivered, right? Now, delivery, a lot of people, uh, what we've seen up to now is platforms, right? Everyone's looking at ETAs. When is my product going to arrive? Great. I have an idea, and by the way, don't think that that's very precise. That's usually about a 12 to 24 hour indication when, you're, when your shipment's going to arrive in the best of times. But if it's fine if it arrives on time, but if it arrives and I can't use it because it's not in condition, then there's absolutely no point for it to have arrived in the first place. So how do we do this? How do we get there in the future? How do we digitize shipments? Now, what I'm going to talk to you about is where we're going to, okay? This is how we can actually move towards autonomous logistics. This is not there yet. And this is a combination of uh, different technologies, which is what we're doing. So we want real-time data intelligence from all the way, all the way across the, the, the chain, no matter which mode it's in, and no matter if we're at the product, or the box, or the pallet, or the container level. And we need to make sure that all this information is getting up into uh, somewhere to, in real time, so that the clients can uh, have all that information and being able to manage those exceptions that I've been telling you about, right? Those times when I need to have real actionable information. Information I can act upon, something that is gonna allow me to save my product, get involved, act on it, right? So we want that. Uh, and we want that all the time, constantly. Now, you'll think IoT is there and this is what we do. And it's true, there is IoT. There's lots of companies out there that are doing it. There's a lot of companies that are just reselling devices that they're buying out of China and then connecting into a platform that work maybe 30% of the time, 40% of the time. There's many comments I can, I'm not gonna go into what my competition does, um, but we focused on quality and service, which is why last year when we came out with our, or in 2021, we launched in 2020, in 2021 we came out with our solution. We won, uh, PwC did a global search uh, for Pfizer, and we beat out 42 companies globally. Why? Because we focused on quality and service, and our products simply work. Anyways, I'll get to that later. I'm jumping ahead. So we have the real-time data intelligence. Now what do we want to do in the future if we want to start moving towards autonomous logistics? We need to connect that data, or the, the physical shipment with that data, to smart contracts or blockchain, right? I talked about the paper trail at the beginning in the first slide, over 200 manual exchanges of information. So now we want to digitize that. Blockchain is already there in uh, supply chains and logistics. It's actually one of the areas where blockchain is having a lot of success since it's really moving quite fast there. But that's only the financial aspect. Now what we need to do is connect into the real-time data intelligence which is not very easy to do yet. It's, there's no, there's, we need interoperability. So this is where we're going to. So we're gonna be connecting our, uh, um, uh, our data into those smart contracts. So we're gonna connect, call it connected blockchain. What you also need to do is you need to embed insurance, you need to embed finance, right? Why? Because then you can actually become a clearinghouse. No longer do you need to wait 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days for a payment. If you're a supplier and you've received an order and you've handed off your goods at that first point, and those goods are in condition when you hand them off, why do you need to wait to find out if this person has gotten the goods that aren't in condition? And why should you be penalized? It's not your fault. 
So with a connected blockchain, with real-time data and connected smart contracts, when the buyer puts the money in to purchase, they can get paid at the release. Then it moves on. Carrier A, they've done their job. Everything's good. We know that because we have real-time data intelligence and we've connected into the blockchain, so they can get paid. Same thing with carrier C. And then here on, carrier, on the third carrier, well, they're the ones who messed up. They misread the information. They did a delivery. They didn't keep it in condition. They didn't, what happens a lot of times at airports, they didn't put it back into a cold temperature room because the flight was delayed for an hour and they couldn't be bothered and just heat it up on the tarmac. Very, very, very common issue. Well, then we know immediately. We know who's responsible, what's happened, where it's happened, why it's happened, and therefore, with all this information together, I know who's going to pay for it instantly, no more insurance claims. Everyone else has been paid. Buyer gets notified that a new shipment has been automatically sent a request to the supplier, and we start again and we move forward. And this is where we're going to get to. And this is what's going to lead us into uh, autonomous logistics. Now, so I also, sorry, because I've skipped around a bit, but so with the advance, everyone's talking about AI, right? I think AI, and we heard it this morning, is a bit dangerous to jump in too quickly, okay? So what I like to talk about is not AI, but IA, intelligent automation, okay? What we're talking about there is that over the years, we've seen business go from siloed departments, right? everyone keeping their own information, not having uh, ways to optimize. Then we had ERP systems that came in. And when those ERP systems came in, we started to connect all areas of companies. And so all that information, we started to build up massive amounts of data, and companies were able to start analyzing much better on how to optimize their companies. And that built up a lot of business intelligence. Now that business intelligent with all that data, we now know how to improve processes. Now with parts of AI, what we can actually do is automate certain aspects of this. We can automate today, automated release, right? So we could say, with all the past data, I know exactly what happens at 99% probability when my product is good. So I don't need to have my quality assurance in the pharma uh, logistics world, for example, analyze the data to determine if the product is able to be released because that's going to take a few hours to up to a day to get that done. We can actually end up doing an automated release and that can end up being done in 20 seconds because all the data is analyzed. And especially because nowadays still with people using uh, USB data loggers which are non-real-time uh, connected device, data is decentralized. What I mean by decentralized not with blockchain or anything like that, what I mean is that QAs in California and Singapore and Europe and wherever else all have that data on PDF files in their own hard drives. So you can't even consolidate the data to be able to optimize your logistics. So at least in this way, you already have all that data getting consolidated. We can do order processing and validation very quickly. This is things you can automate. Shipping preparation, you can do demand forecasting, planning, Inventory, you can start removing all that waste out of the industry stockouts, overproduction. We can start getting rid of all of this. Um, and so that's what we're going to, and that's how we're going to make everything extremely efficient across logistics. So, oh, okay. Um, so what we've done is we've created connected monitoring as a service. So the first device we've done, which is considered to be one of the best on the market right now because it's the smallest. It's 20% smaller than anyone else's device on the, on the market. It connects globally. It's completely wireless. There's no wires anywhere. It's wireless charging. It works for 45 days on one charge. The new one coming out is 120 days for Maritime. Same size, by the way. Nothing's changed. Just better improvements on hardware and, impro and power consumption. And this has, does absolutely everything. Temperature, humidity, pressure, shock, acceleration, tilt, uh, light, um, rapid altitude change, automatic airplane mode, ocean mode. And this is also edge computing, which means that once it's programmed, and it can, it's made to be able to go on any single product, right? It's real reusable. We do everything with uh, sustainability in mind from the point, from when the moment we start to design it. So it can be on a vaccine today can be on a car tomorrow, 
It could be sending your solar panels uh, to Africa the next day, and then it can go back onto flowers the next day because it changes continuously. It's programmed by the platform. It's what we call click and go. So you just scan the device, you scan your shipment, connects on the platform, platform sends the information to the device and says, hey, this is what you need to do. And from that moment on, you're in charge. Now, if everything goes well, the information will go up to the platform as and when you've asked it, every hour, every two hours, six hours, once a day, whatever you want. What it does is that we, most, almost every other company out there does everything at the platform level. So they automatically send data every hour to the platform. And they say they're real time, but for me, that's still near time. Real time is the moment an event has actually occurred. And that's what we do, and that's why we have edge computing. As Soon as something has been occurred, then the device informs the platform, informs the customers right away. So again, uh, real-time, actionable information. Now, where we're going, and this is very exciting. This is all new tech. This is a credit card size. I have a, still the prototype. The next ones are coming out. So this is a one-year battery life, all printed electronics, printed battery, non-toxic batteries. We're talking about zinc and stuff like that. Digital e-screen just to be able to see if it's good or bad. And um, it replaces your entire data logger business. You don't need any more data loggers, which are very big, thick, plastic, lithium battery, digital screen things that you can't recycle. It's fully recyclable. Um, like I said, it has Bluetooth NFC, so you can act, still consolidate all that data. You don't need to go get it out of the box. It meshes with this one, so you can go from, uh, you can go from passive to real time. Uh, when you want. And this is, is getting very, very exciting. We just launched it um, at Logifarm at the end of April, which is the biggest conference for uh, pharmaceutical logistics. And we had pretty much all of the top 10 pharma companies, global top 10 companies, coming to see us to tell us how we can, uh, when we can start working together on it and when, when is it available. We're able to produce, we will be able to produce 100,000 per month starting in October. And we're already looking to see how we're going to be able to produce more. So on top of that, so what we need to get towards autonomous logistics, you need to be able to centralize everything, as I've said. So we have a great platform. We don't, I don't believe in the platform. I think AI is a software killer. For me, I'm all about data. That's why even, my, even our devices are continuously evolving. I have a roadmap you'll see in a second. So we're continuously evolving with technology, right? If you don't evolve, you die. That's the way I see it. Now, platforms are good. They're great. You can add on lots of advanced analytics. You can get much more information and, and be able to take uh, quick decisions on things, see, visualize things. However, I think that with AI, um, other company, the companies out there, they're going to start building the platforms to see the data the way they want to see it, the way they're used to it, the whatever is most important to them. I'm not going to tell them. Our platform is fully customizable, so it can be moved uh, the way the client wants it, but I'm not going to tell them how they want to see their information, right? And I'm not going to start making a report or a platform for every single customer. So we already connect into SAP. We had to do that for Pfizer when we won. Um, and uh, and uh, all of our data is absolutely uh, secure. We're extremely uh, fully encrypted. We're as strong as a, a Swiss bank because we've had the same security firm build our infrastructure in terms from a security point of view. Um, and we went through a serious amount of uh, attack and pen tests, which you have to do because if you work with pharma, you're held to the highest degrees that they are. <laughs> so in terms of regulation and safety and everything. Um, so everything's encrypted. We're 100% Swiss from uh, design, development, and manufacturing, and data. So all our data is in Switzerland, in the Swiss data centers also because the data laws there are very, very strong. We maintain the data for 10 years for audit purposes, analytical purposes, whatever you want to do. So that's going to be uh, uh, very useful for analysis and optimizing logistics over time. So now we have the tools. And now let's get to the roadmap of how we get to autonomous logistics. So we launched, as I said, in 2020. 2021, we won a mandate. 2022, we finished off our devices, uh, the mandate with Pfizer. Uh, and 2021 was our first commercial year. We did 300,000 in revenues. This year, we signed a contract with Pfizer for 1.6 million annual. 
This year we're projected to do 3.3 million. We're signing on with Maersk now um, for products coming out of Africa into the UK and Europe and also for ASML chip, uh, chips being sent around from uh, Netherlands around the world. We're, as I said, speaking to a lot of the top pharma. Um, we're doing projects with Kugenagel as well, and we expect to be signing on with them as well. Our devices are the only ones that work at minus 30. Everyone else, there's a lot of marketing out there, and this is why I say, when people say, what is your competitive advantage to everyone else? I say quality and service, because that's what we focused on. So. My partner likes to say, simply works, period. And it's true, it really does. We did a, a go live uh, with Pfizer, uh, and over the first month, zero incidents, nothing. Not one device didn't work, wasn't fully charged, wasn't fully ready for them to use. And that was great, they hadn't seen that. That was, it was very, very proud, and we got um, uh, um, congratulation emails from all the way up to the top, which was, was fantastic. Um, this year, as I said, we've come out with the connected label. Now we're doing intelligent automation, so the automated releases. We're embedding finance and insurance. So generally, we're talking to them. So we're going to be embedding the insurance into our product, and we're going to be working on the blockchain uh, to bring in that, the, everything else. Where do we go in the future? My long-term goal is to have a shipping label come out of the printer with the information where the people have to see on it with all printed electronics in the ba inside, that's ours, <laughs> that's without battery, completely battery free. The technology is there, backscatter antenna, antennas to collect energy, make your, search, your circuitry work, and send the information out. The difficulties is bringing standardizations, bringing these technologies to work. They all work individually, separately. <laughs> so you can harvest energy if you have an antenna pointing at it, or, and you have to get permissions from the telecoms industry. And uh, uh, you, have, you can make your circuitry work and then you can send information, but then to get them all to work together is going to take a few years. And then with that, uh, uh, with AI and the uh, and additional uh, edge computing within all of this computing that's printed, again, on a shipping label that's coming out to the same printer, giving you real-time information around the world, you're going to have machine to machine. So in the future, and this is where I'm saying about autonomous logistics, you'll have on-demand manufacturing. No more overstocks, no more big stock rooms everywhere else, right? Bluetooth, RFID, Wi-Fi, everything. If you want to take a very, very simple example, because we're working with Neom, the future city in Saudi, so I already know where they want to go, and we're working with them on the visibility side. If you take a simple example about livability is their, is their main thing. In a hotel, the shampoo bottles, whenever you want to get, when you go to your hotel, you want to make sure the shampoo bottle's full. Right, so if the shampoo bottle gets to a certain point, it, takes, it sends a signal to the stock room, say, housekeeping, hey, you have to make sure to fill up that shampoo bottle in uh, room 101. Then they have five bottles of shampoo in their stock, so they just lost a bottle. So then that's going to send an order all the way down to the manufacturing, and they're going to know that in four months' time or three months' time or two months' time, whatever, I need to produce an extra bottle to send to that distribution center locally who is going to supply to that hotel. And from there, with that, then all of the logistics aspect will get automated. So it will just go on an autonomous truck, pallet using computer vision, OCR, will prepare your shipments together, they'll go and they'll move on. And then you'll even be able to make sure that all those empty miles are gone because every time you send something, you'll be able to make sure that whatever is going there is coming back being full as well. So. That's Hive. Uh, we're leading the way to autonomous logistics, and we're going to continue innovating. And thank you very much for listening. Fantastic. Thanks.